let's look at another hypothesis test for proportion. So here a garden center claims that only 10% of the mango seeds fail to germinate. So a mango farm trials 20 mango seeds from this garden center and finds that four of them do not germinate. The question is, is this garden center's claim incorrect? Now if the claim is incorrect, that means what they're doing is understating the proportion or percentage of mango seeds that don't germinate. So here we start off with our probability model. We'll let random variable x here denote the number of seeds that do not germinate out of 20. So that means that x has a binomial distribution. 20 is the number of trials. And p here is the population proportion that don't germinate. Hypothesis test here, the null hypothesis is going to be the same as the claim. So it's null meaning there's a hypothesis of no change. We start off by believing what the garden center claims. And the alternative is that the claim is understated, which means that more than 10% of the mango seeds fail to germinate. So the garden center is only going to be in problems if more than 10% don't germinate. If less than 10% germinate, there's no issue at all. So with that set up, the observed value here of our test statistic, which is our x here, random variable x, is 4. And so the p-value is going to be a probability that x is bigger than or equal to 4. Remember, again, I said earlier that the direction of the alternative hypothesis and the direction of the probability in the p-value, the tail is the same. This is bigger than, that will be bigger than as well. And this is under the assumption that 10% of seeds don't germinate. So in fact, if the garden center's claim is correct, what is the probability that more than four seeds don't germinate? And this is one minus probability of x less than equal to three. We get that from our r, and we get 0.1329. So here the p-value is bigger than 0 0.05. So we reject, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now, if you look at the observed proportion here, what we had was 4 out of 20, 10% will be only 2. This 4 out of 20 is 20%, 2. So in the sample that we have, in fact, 20% don't germinate. But that is not going to be unusual if, in fact, the population proportion that don't germinate is 10%. Conclusion here is, based on this analysis, we'll conclude that there is no evidence against the garden center's claim. All right, good. That's another example. I want to state the case here. Here, This is an exercise that you'll try yourself. This is a famous case of Swain versus Alabama in 1965 in this uh, Talagera County in Alabama. An African-American man, Robert Swain, was accused of rape. The 100 men jury panel was selected, and on this panel there were only eight African Americans, although the population of American uh, African Americans in that county was much higher. So, through the exemptions and preemptory challenges by the lawyers, there were no African Americans on the final jury. Swain was convicted and sentenced to death. The question is, and this was actually quite widely publicized, but in social forums, is this 100-man jury panel racially biased? So there was a challenge and uh, an appeal based on this, that why be the random variable that denotes the number of African-Americans on the panel, then why is binomial 100p, where p denotes proportion of African-Americans in the population? And the hypothesis of interest here are going to be, well, we will here, p is, African American populations in the population. So we want to know if the proportion in the population is the same as the proportion in this particular pan in the particular panel here. Now, I didn't actually I remember uh, looking back here. I don't think I stated here what's going on here. But in fact, proportion of African Americans in the population in this particular county was 28%.
So we're testing the hypothesis over here. P equals 0 0.28. This is P is less than 0 0.28. The panel is racially biased if they are less than the population proportion in the panel. So here then, our P value is probability that Y is less than or equal to. Now note that the direction is the same as this here. And what I had on the panel was altogether eight African Americans. So P value is probability that Y is less than or equal to eight given the population proportion actually is 28% and this is the same as in the panel here. So this comes from R fairly, fairly easily. Let's have a look at this. So it's P binomial 100.28 far of the R is P by gnome and I had 8 on the panel 100 altogether and 0 0.28 is population proportion. Oops, I spell P by norm. And that's quite small. It's 6.6969 times 10 to the negative 7. 6.6969 times 10 to the negative 7. Essentially, I'm going to shift the decimal place 10 times, 7 places this way. And that certainly is much, much less than 0, 0.0. So, we have sufficient evidence to reject our null hypothesis. Now the question of interest here was, is this panel racially biased? And we'll conclude here based on this analysis. Now that the panel is indeed racially biased. So that's an example. Have a look at this carefully and understand the steps involved in this. There's not a whole lot involved over here. Now, errors here. The issue here is we don't actually know if the hypothesis, null hypothesis, is true or false. We're basing a decision based on probabilities and the data. So here are the possibilities. We may have the situation where H0 is true and we reject the H0. This is a serious error, we call this a type 1 error. And in fact, if H0 is true and we fail to reject the H0, we made a correct decision. Likewise, if H0 is false and we reject H0, our decision is correct. But if we actually, when H0 is false, fail to reject it, we made another error, this is called a type 2 error. Now, the type 1 error has probability less than or equal to alpha because we did, in effect, choose our alpha, our significance level, as being the probability of making an error. In other words, the probability that the H0 is false, given the null hypothesis. Type 2 error is called beta. And the power of the test we saw earlier when we were looking at sample size calculations for the linear model is 1 minus beta. What we want is the probability of type 1 error to be low, and the power to be high. And these actually are conflicting. They are contradictory in one sense. So these are conflicting requirements. And the sample size calculations based on significance level and power here tries to optimize that in some sense. In other words, the only way to be able to maintain your type 1 error and increase power is by increasing sample size. 
Now increasing sample size has a cost to it, of course. If you require a larger sample, it's not easy sometimes to find a large sample, to recruit a large sample, and there are costs involved in that. So this is what Type 1, Type 2 errors are all about, and power is all about. And you probably find lots of more material on this online if you search for this. All right, let's take a look at the next part, which is sampling distribution of the sample proportion, and we'll see this in the third lecture. Thank you.